Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and yes, finally it's time for me to yeah, give Space Empires 4X a try. I shared an image on Twitter and I was really overwhelmed by all your cool reactions, responses. Really do appreciate this a lot. So it seems there is some good fan base for this game. Unfortunately, I only own the base game. Um, which I basically got through my friendly local game store, so thanks for that. Unfortunately, they didn't own any of the expansions, and it seems that the expansions are once more out of print, so we may need to wait for the next P500 before I get any deeper into Space Empires 4X, that is. Obviously, I'm playing one of the solo scenarios today, and I believe that I need to start with a one-player doomsday machine scenario. As I've never played this game before, I only watched a playthrough a couple of years ago, I will definitely play on the easy level, which means the first doomsday machine will appear um, at the, what was it, economic phase 7, the second at 9, and the third at 11. And the strength for the first one is 1, then it's 3, then it's 5, which ultimately goes into 6 hull size, 7 hull size, and an 8 hull size, and the respective attack and or defense strength values here. Definitely do not expect any sort of expert play. I mean, most obviously, as I've never played this game before, and I will also most likely yeah, misinterpret some of the rules. I will forget some of the rules. This game is all about bookkeeping um, and using pencils. I think there are web apps from folks who are insane, insanely good coming up with those. But today I will really start playing or use basically the standard components of the game. The only little, let's say, minor customizations are those crystal tokens here. Those are the spaces where the doomsday machines may appear and these spaces will also i think i'm not allowed to enter those in any shape or form and up here you basically see the counters for the doomsday so when each of those final discs are basically being removed this means then we will trigger or the respective doomsday machine will make its entrance as I'm typically playing blue, I ended up with Terra being my homeworld. This was really just a lucky coincidence. This is, I think, the normal setup for two-player scenario here. So I start with four of those space yards. I have, I think, three of those colony ships. I have one miner and three of those scout let's call it squadrons or fleets or groups. I think you can play those either way. I could pretty much put all three of those in a single group. I could have two groups with two and one each, but right now, as I'm not playing against any human players, I think it's beneficial to spread things out a bit um, because I think I need to start exploring to get minerals, to get to find new colonies and whatnot. So I think this is what I will do. As usual, I will explain you the game as I go. If you don't know the game, again, don't expect any expert level teach here because again, I have never played this game before. I will most certainly play things wrong, which is also the main re reason why that I'm basically not going to play a full session in this one video. I will have a relatively short, let's call it introductory, um, scenario maybe playing through the first three normal turns going into the uh, I keep forgetting what those are economic phases and then give the experts some opportunity to correct me where I was wrong because I'm relatively certain I will play things incorrectly but again with that being said let's get cracking again we are in our first turn here and this is how the game will shift along you will play for turn one every player will take their turns then you play through turn two again every player will take their turns then you move into turn three then you will run through a series of steps of the economic phase then you will reset the turn track and then you keep going until you either win or lose the game here in this case i simply haha he said simply have to defeat all three doomsday machines. When they appear, they will move towards my colonies and or my home planet. And I think when once my home planet is gone, I have basically lost the game. If I defeat the final doomsday machine, then I will be victorious. Don't count on this. I have really no clue how things will go. Obviously, the game is... Yeah 
heavily relying on luck, which some of you who know my channel know how well I'm rolling dice, how well I'm drawing cards or flipping these counters over. So expect the worst here. Um, but I think it's still fun to watch. Before I get started, a huge shout out to all of my patrons and channel members. You guys are truly amazing. If you do want to join my community here on YouTube, you can click that little join button. You will find a link to my page on Patreon. You can click on that little thanks button beneath that video. You can leave a comment, like and subscribe. This also greatly helps the channel. And I think with that being said, we should be now ready to go. Happy New Year! In case you haven't watched my East India Companies video run through on things, I think this is the first video I'm recording in 2023. So yeah. Let's see how things go, shall we? Maybe one more thing. As I have never played this game before, I know I keep telling you this, but I want you to be warned. I will not immediately start playing with any of those, let's call it advanced rules here. At least for now. Definitely, I think we may not need the decoys in any way because I'm playing against an AI, so I don't need the decoys. I will most certainly not going to use the pipelines, these merchant ship pipelines. I think they're pretty amazing, but as I'm also playing on the small map, not quite sure how valuable those are. I think those are, but let's see about those. Similarly for mines and the fighters, because the doomsday machine per default are not vulnerable to fighters and or mines, unless you're rolling on those. This is now basically a little bit of a gambling thing. Of course, I could start producing mines. I could start producing those carriers and those fighters. I think I still have to develop the technology first, but still, again, it might be that none of those three doomsday machines will be vulnerable upon those. So I'm not sure if I should do that or if I should simply wait to see if they are vulnerable and then we'll start exploring those. So if I find out that one of those will be vulnerable to mines, I may want to start um, investing into that technology and start producing those mines because otherwise those will be useless. Uh, I think apart from that, I'm also most likely not going to use the alien civilizations which might appear on those barren planets. If we find a barren planet, that is, I think they are only or they can only appear in those uh, white um, outer space regions of the board. I mean, this is my home world region with the blue background here. And I think there are no barren planets in there. Might be terribly wrong. And also depending on how things go, I may want to reconsider that just to keep things interesting. If not, again, I'm more than happy to play this again, basically all in and maybe also playing against the other solo scenario where you're really actively playing against um, some alien civilizations, basically. They are definitely more involved in respect to the rules, which was one of the reasons why I decided to go against the Doomsday Machine, which is definitely much simpler, at least from what I could tell. But I guess now enough said, we will start playing the game. Right now there is no Doomsday Machine out yet and I think I will always be the starting player anyway. So I will always take my turn before the Doomsday Machines. I think there could be more than one, but I think if there are two on the board, I'm pretty sure I'm in trouble. On the other hand, they will appear one after another in relatively short amount of time. So not unlikely maybe that we may have to deal with two or maybe all three of those at the same time. Let's see about this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is my starting fleet and I can only basically the first thing I will do is to move. Uh, right now my movement is one, which means all my ships can move one hex per turn. Later on I can update my uh, movement, but right now we are not in an economic phase, so which means we have to live with what we have right now. In order to move into a space where there is an unexplored yeah, exploration tile, here. I cannot use my colony ship. I cannot use my miner. I have to use a ship that comes with an attack value. I believe I can take a colony ship with me with a scout for example, but I think the risk is still relatively high. I have no information about the game board. I just became a warp capable civilization or so. Um, so we're just taking our first steps into the outer space. So I guess, yeah. Let's, let's start somewhere. Again, it doesn't really matter if we're moving left or right. I have no information whatsoever. 
So I will move the scouter group one into this area here. I will not flip this token just yet from what I understood. I think you have to do that in the exploration step. So first you have the movement, then you have the combat step in case there is a combat and only then will you do an exploration. There is also one very um, distinct rule for this scenario is you cannot enter a hex where there is an exploration marker and a doomsday machine. It's, it's basically too late then of course yeah if the machine moved out and then you can still move in there but again it cannot have both of them so I think yeah let's simply head out and yeah I put those counter underneath those there is no hiding whatsoever this is really useful for a uh, let's say multiplayer game where you would also use let's say some level of fog of war where the other players only know what there is when they actually engage you and this fighter group or scout group will move in there. Again, that's now the point. As the exploration happens afterwards, I could now really decide to gamble and send my colony ship behind those or let each of those have them accompanied by a colony ship. If I enter a black hole, for example, or some other systems, I will basically hmm, sacrifice them. Similarly for the miner and I think let's not do that just yet let's wait let's really play it play it cool and end the movement phase at this point in time again again i could send the colony ship with this one here or the miner and the colony ship with this scout group three but again right now i have no clue um what it's beneath those there is a technology out there which would allow me or a certain cruiser i have to check which one this is to basically scan an adjacent territory or sector before you're moving in there which definitely quite handy but yeah I don't have that just yet again we just learned to crawl so we are not doing any fighting because we don't know what there is so we will do the exploration I believe I started with this one so we will simply flip it over and yes it's a planet hmm or it's a colony which we could colonize okay that's really cool nothing else will happen here but at least I have a target for my colony ships here that's useful down here we will do this and these are minerals okay cool so with my miner i can pick up those minerals send them back home to terra and then they will give me some of those um what are those points cps construction points exactly cool that's a good start and then last we have a barren planet we do have barren planets <laughs> in my home region so i was wrong in order to terra uh, yeah in order to colonize this i would need to terraform this first which would mean i have to develop the technology here accordingly can colonize any unoccupied planet and right now i can only colonize non-barren planets and they have uh, that would cost me 20 com construction points I still have my home world with me. I mean, it's still fully developed, so I would gain those 20 construction points at the start of the um, economic phase accordingly. I can still think about this. The main question now is, should we play with the alien civilizations or not? I think not yet. Maybe the next one I'm encountering, I may have to reconsider things. Ultimately, would put, I think is it now a face down marker on top of this or so and then I, I mean it's still good so you can fight those alien civilizations and you typically gain stuff from that so it's also not a bad thing but i'm relatively certain that with my standard scout i don't stand a chance here anyway would be more interesting i see that but let's start playing it small and again i'm not doing an awful long video today so I will let you decide if you want me to bring in those alien civilizations with my next episode or so. Okay this was the first turn already so we are moving into turn two. Of course in a multiplayer game all the other players would now take the turn first so this is really something that all the players do completely so i do my movement i do my combat i do my exploration then it would be player two doing their stuff then it would be player three and so on i'm playing alone so we are moving into turn two right away and before you ask yes i was not able to build any more things i was not able to develop my colony in any way this will happen at the end of the first initial three turns so again i will have to make do with what i have but i think it's still okay so let's back go back to the movement phase so we are sending one colony ship over here and we are putting this on top of this planet as of this point in time when i'm announcing hey 
I'm colonizing this world, this colony ship is now gone. I could send it further, but in this case, again, I have decided, no, this colony ship will colonize this planet. Makes sense, right? With a miner, I'm doing something very similar. We are moving here onto the mineral. It's taking the mineral with it. And then with that, I can move it, bring it back home to Terra, and it will bring me five construction points. That's really not nothing. Then I can still move my three scouts. Space is still pretty vast, so I have no clue what I'm doing here. Before I'm moving um, this fellow further out, I think I will move this scout to this location. In case we are finding a colony there, it might still give us something, right? Yeah, let's do that. So we are moving this ship in here. Let's bring it down here so to indicate that I have moved. Um, with this other scout here, I think doesn't really matter too much where I'm moving to so I think I'm moving in here and with this scout I will bring it down here. This is now I think the problem and maybe I really should have risked some of my colony ships further. Yeah that's the point because uh, my colony ships will never move faster than one. No matter my technology level for movement, they will always remain at one. The same is true for the miners. So maybe I should have taken the risk and sent them to other scouts because then I could continue moving with them. So right now, but I have made my choices here. I've made my bed, so I have to sleep in it accordingly. Again, there is no combat whatsoever, so we can directly jump into the exploration phase. Again, I think I'm, I can choose the order of things, so we will start over here. Oh, Vulcan. Hmm. We have basically found another colony, though that's cool. So we can send the colony ship over here with our next movement. That's not bad, that's not bad. So we will definitely make two new colonies at the start of the next, basically at the end of the next economic phase, that is. Awesome. Then yeah, let's have a look in here. And that's Andromeda, also another galaxy. Another co potential colony. Not bad, not bad. And over here, wow, Prometheus. Okay, awful movie. Um, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I think that was pretty good. I do think there are some detrimental tokens, even in my, let's say, starting homeworld things. And again, there's, I think, the same mix for all of the players. So there is a set of these tokens for the red player, for the yellow player, these are blue. Here are the whites. Hopefully it's getting clear on camera. But yeah, I think that was an okay movement phase, quite honestly. Uh, exploration phase. So let's end the turn accordingly. So we're moving into turn three, again, starting with the movement. This colony ship will move onto Vulcan, right? And I think we are moving this ship further down towards, hmm, does it matter Andromeda or Prometheus? I think again, yeah, I think it doesn't matter. So we're moving it one space here. The miner will move back to Terra. It will drop off its mineral over here. So it's also done its move. And I, I can see that you're really getting a little bit confused about things, which one has moved and which not. Maybe there is a cleverer way to do that, which I haven't figured out yet. This colony ship can't move. Um, we already moved this one. It's moving here. So we still have our scouts left. And again, it doesn't really matter too much. On the other hand, we may want to move what's next to us, but I think this could go in here or here. No, I think this scout will move over here. This scout will move in here. And I think this scout either here or there. Let's send it here. I think it's still, I think it doesn't really matter too much. No, it doesn't. Yeah, and again, that's already the movement phase. So let's start to explore. So why not start with this one here? Bam, that's a nebula. I think it's not a bad thing. It will only influence the combat if we ever going to have a combat in that space. I believe the doomsday machine is completely unaffected by the nebula. We are, so we have to live with that. And I think there are also some movement restrictions, so I can only move into a nebula from an, if I start my space from an, uh, from my journey from an adjacent space, for example. But that's basically that. Overall, nothing really bad, but I'm relatively certain nasty stuff will happen. So let's do this one here. Oh, that's another Another planet, another potential colony, not bad. And over here, 
we have asteroids. I think it's basically the same thing with some, let's say, slightly different combat rules to that. I think some of the tech levels will be reduced and whatnot. And I think I can also only move in, a, in an asteroid space if I start my movement from an adjacent space. But apart from that, there is really no ill effect for now. But yeah, those were the first three turns of the game. So we are moving into our first economic phase. So we're moving one of my little helper tokens here. So let's start the economic phase by yeah, collecting colony income. Unfortunately, those two colonies are too fresh right now. So they're not yet producing anything. Um, so we have to stick to our home world for now. So we will get 20 CPs from that. And the next step is to collect mineral income, which is five. So we can might as well do that right away. So this is being consumed. It's out of the game and we can yeah, basically note down our first income here. So we had colony CPs 20. That's from our home world. And we got the five from our mineral. Again, we are not playing with the mineral CPs, I think. Yeah. From reading this, it really seems a little bit cumbersome. Maybe for some more advanced scenarios, you really need those in order to help you produce more stuff. But again, for now, I think I can let this go. Then, of course, we have to deal with the maintenance and we don't have to turn a bit for the turn order. That's at least something I will always be first. As for our maintenance, we are looking at our ships. And again, only the ships with a hull size will cost us some money. Um, so it's one here, one here and one here. Just to show you this, they all have a hull size of one, which means our maintenance is a three, which means we have three, we have 22 points remaining. We can carry over leftover construction point CPs to the next turn, but maximum of 30 shouldn't be a problem at this point in time. Question is, how do we want to spend our CPs? How many more? I think we really have to prep things. So we may want to consider going for, for example, ship size two, which cost us 10 CPs, which would allow us to build Bases and DDs are destroyers, right? I really hate these war gamey um, abbreviations, quite honestly. Huh. To build them is nine, so we can, I think, we, again, we have to start developing those. On the other hand, we can also start adding our attack value, for example. The thing is, if I do increase the attack rating, which oh, will cost us 20, by the way, um, we get a plus one, which is basically very important, especially when we are playing the more advanced doomsday machines later on. All my existing fleets will not have this um, attack modifier. So that's the thing. I can scrap them and at any time, basically, then can rebuild them and then they get the new technology. I think there is a variant rule or so where you can say, yeah, I will make it easy on me. We will allow that um, all the machines, all of my fleets and, and, and ships will be equipped with basically replicator technology or so that they can auto upgrade. But that's something I will not play today. Whew. So what am I going to do? Tactics also not unimportant. Um, I think the Doomsday Machine always has a tactics rating of two already, which is pretty high. And this kind of is a tiebreaker in respect to who is firing first if basically ships have the same attack order in them. And this basically defined by, let's see if I can show you another scout or so. Yeah, let's look at those scouts here. So they have an E, which is pretty late in the attack range. So first all the A's fire, then all the B's would fire. The, the scouts are very, very late here. Um, and again, if there are two scouts fighting each other, for example, they would both have the E and the tactics would then tell me, okay, if so, we first look for a tiebreaker who has the higher tactics rating. So let's say I have a C one, my opponent has a zero, then this E would, my E would fire before the ease of my opponent. And if they're also the same, then I think the defender shoots first in that attack group, that is. Okay, yeah, I have to think about this for a second. I think I will definitely invest in my, into my ship size too, because those destroyers, oh, let me have a look, those are here. 
they also fight a D and that's the same as for the level one doomsday machine. So we at least tied. So if I then also bring me up to um, basically a tactics level of two and they would hit me, I would be the defender and I would shoot first. So that's at least something, that's my thought process here. Pretty poor, I'm relatively certain about that. And I think really being this civilization, I really shouldn't know about the doomsday machine. So maybe some other civilization has warned me or so. I don't know. Mm, yeah, I think let's do that. Okay, so I spent, so I'm here basically. So I spent 10 in order to go for ship size two. So I can start building destroyers. Question is, should I build destroyers right now? I still have 12 left. Can I do something meaningful with 12? So looking here, attack, no. Defense, no. Tactics, no. So there's no point. Maybe. So I think, yeah, I will not uh, invest in any more technologies. I can still buy ships though. And looking at the current game state, I think we have at least one, two more planets left, which we could um, colonize and we don't have any more colony ships. So I think I would definitely spend eight to buy another colony ship now. So we already have spent 18 out of our 22 and with four uh, we could go for another scout no even a scout costs us six so i think that's that which means we have spent um 10 on technology eight on ships um we don't spend on upgrades maintenance increase buys losses I think it's just the four here right remaining cps minus cp spent on upgrades Ah, yeah, you can upgrade, right, right, right. You can upgrade ships. Um, basically, I think you can do that even when they're not moving or so, you can still upgrade them later on. No, I think we don't need to do that. Main increase in buys. Yeah, we don't have any colony ship. Or colony ship doesn't cost us any maintenance and we don't have a decrease in losses. No, I think that's totally fine. So we carry over the four into the next round, which we can hopefully use later on so that was placing units and we could have placed we have four space yards in um, our terran homeworld and for each space yard you can build one colony ship easily so the last thing to do is now finally to increase our colonies which means we are flipping our colony ships accordingly so as of the next economic phase onward um, we are actually producing 10 more CPs in total. But of course, we don't have any more uh, materials waiting for us or minerals waiting for us. So it's basically net five gain on this, but still, that's not too bad. I take that. Cool, cool stuff. So again, this was the economic phase in total. And I'm also not quite sure when the doomsday machine enters. Does it enter here? Does it enter there? I think it doesn't really matter, right? No, I think it doesn't really matter. Ah, uh, maybe it does. Hmm. No, I think it does matter because in between I can make a choice where to build. So let's say it enters here. I basically have my full economic phase to make an informed decision where I want to place my new ships, for example, either bringing them away or um, having them go for the doomsday machine. So maybe someone can let me know if that happens. It says each enters during the economic phase, hmm. during whatever during means. And I think maybe even here a bit for player order, maybe this would be the time I don't know, but anyway, we are moving back to turn one of basically the next economic phase. Again, this game doesn't really have game rounds or so. It's simply these three turn tracks and then it's uh, basically going through those cycles until either the win or loss condition is being met. Originally, I thought we were going to end it here, um, but I think let's do things a little bit more interesting. So let's play another full three turns and the economic phase that goes with it and then I will guess I will end it for this video here today. So things should move much quicker now. I think I have explained to you most of that. Of course we haven't seen any combat yet but even combat is I think for a war game relatively straightforward. I, I keep calling this a war game but I see these 
Chits and Counters. I will roll dice for me that basically war game. And it's being published by GMT. <laughs> Does make sense. Okay, then let's do some movement, right? So we will move the colony ship onto Andromeda. That much is clear. We will move um, this colony ship towards, I think, oh, should we move it towards? It's two way either way, right? So it's here, so let's move it towards, um, yeah, let's move it towards Orion here, why not? Uh, we can't colonize the barren planet. I could have done that, but I think I will make it to Orion anyway before I end the turn or make it to the economic phase. So I think it's not the end of the world here. Maybe I really should have considered going for a second colony ship rather than the attack. I think this was pretty stupid. I already start seeing things more clearly now, but okay. Obviously, I will not take it back. Um, yeah, with this scout here, I think think let's stay close to this one first so we will try to explore this one here again there is no ill effects for these nebulas in any way um let's then also explore this space down here i think the miner we will hmm, that's now a question because we don't know so here could be a mineral for example if i move this miner now here i will miss out on things so i guess we are moving this one over here here we want to know what's next to our colony. Yeah, I think we are not going to move the miner just yet. And again, I don't have to move the miner back to my homeworld. I can move it to any colony to gain its um, benefits, basically. I think these were all of the movements as far as I can tell. Yeah, let's explore. Plore. So let's start here. Oh, that's minerals. Good that I didn't move. Ah, I, wa I was going to move it here actually. So I think I would have gained something. But okay, I take it. Let's see what we have to. Oh, more minerals. Okay, I get to. Maybe I should consider a mining ship doing the next economic phase. Also, we only can build two, but might be still worth it. They're only moving one. So I guess it definitely. Maybe I should have. Ah, yeah, not knowing the game, definitely a problem here. And last but not least, we are exploring. Oh, also <laughs> minerals. Okay, so um, it's basically like I envisioned. So that's definitely one, two, three. Yeah, it's definitely the closest one. So we are moving this uh, miner over here. And I think after the next, I think at the end of this turn sequence, we should be able to bring the mineral back to this colony. So that's cool. That's cool. And quite honestly, I already start to seal the appeal of this game. I haven't seen a lot, but I really like this whole exploration piece, planning things, playing poorly. Yeah, um, there is not an awful lot of combat in this particular scenario. It's really more like growing your colony in a more or less meaningful way. And yeah, it, some point in time we will see some combats. I think the other scenario with those aliens and of course playing it multiplayer, you will see way more combat. But also not, not that early in the game, relatively certain about that. But okay, those were all of our explorations. So let's move into the next turn and do some more movement. So the colony ship will move here onto Orion. That much is clear. The miner will move towards those minerals here. And I think those were already the, let's say, special movements. Yeah, and I think up next we are going this one here. Again, I do want to know, uh, but it's mm, either way, right? Hmm. Yeah, we can roll a die. Doesn't really matter too much. Maybe let's bring this one over here. And Prometheus will be one colony we are going to colonize next at least I think so I guess we also want to know what's next there and then we can explore this one I think it does make sense right yeah let's do it like this again no combat uh, which might be really really boring um, so maybe I really should consider barren planets with alien civilizations. Again, they're not attacking us actively. So we place a token on there and then we can take it out or not. Um, so they will not start hunting us down or so in any way. But still, maybe just to show you a little bit more combat in between, we may want to consider doing that as of the next video or so. So let's explore stuff. Oh, more minerals. Oh, I like that. I like that. So we can have this miner move here and there. I think that's good. Down here we have this one. Oh, another colony, Odyssey. 
Hmm, also not bad. Problem really is, I think I really need to start building forward space yards here, right? These are space yards, correct? Shipyards, space yards, shipyards, of course. Um, so I have to scrap them here at my home world and maybe have maybe one here or so with my next thing. I think I can build shipyard even at a newly built colony as far as I know. Um, and then last but not least, we have this one up here. And that's a black hole. Okay, it had to happen. Um, did you see this Disney movie, which I really loved as a kid? I really did. Awesome soundtrack. And at least I will not show you a game without rolling any dice. Um, so because that's really now a dice roll we do. So we're rolling a 10 sided die on a one to six, no effect. So we will survive. That's nice. And on a seven to 10. So here rolling high is not a good thing, by the way. So maybe that wor works in my favor. So let's bring out my trusted dice tower, my Lego dice tower. Um, should I go for red? I think I really like the color of these reddish dice and I think they work well on camera. So let's roll it. So what was it again? So we want to roll a one, two, six and a nine. Of course, of course, of course. Now I'm rolling high. Yeah, we have just lost our very first ship here. Amazing. And I think if I would have, let's say, um, group of more than one ship. I think I would need to have that role for each of the ship that would enter there. So let's say this would be a, th a group of three ships, three scouts. I think I have to roll them for each individual ship that is. But in this case, it's out of here. We know there is a black hole. I think the doomsday machine is not affected by black holes in any way. We are, at least if we are moving in, we have to do the same thing. There's an advanced rule where you can go for this slingshot, where you can then continue to move, which is something I do like. So maybe I will consider using this rule. But for now, again, yeah, this ship is out of here. But of course, or this group is out of here. We can build it again. Okie dokie, let's move into the final turn of this economic cycle. And unfortunately, I miscounted. The miner will not make it in time to um, basically, they will dock with this uh, minerals here for sure, but they will not make it back before we are hitting the next economic phase. But that's still okay, I guess. We are out of colony ships that we could move. And I guess, yeah, let's do some movement for our scouts. Sooner or later, they will drop like flies. Question is, hmm, does it matter too much? I mean, yeah, let's move this one down here. It's still close to a colony. And down here, hmm, doesn't also matter too much. Let's bring it over here again. There is no combat, so we can immediately move into the exploration phase. Oh, more minerals here and over here. More minerals. OK, there's an awful lot of minerals in my bluish things. Of course, um, I'm pretty sure there are tables out there which tell you how many of which resources there are, which type of planets and or exploration tokens there are, or system tokens or so. But yeah, of course, I was too lazy to check it out. And again, I want to really explore this game um, for the first time. So yeah, I will simply play the surprise part and we'll like it. <laughs> but this means we are moving into the next economic phase. So let's bring this one back. Again, we will start with our colony income. We don't have any mineral income. We don't have pipeline income in any way. So we will simply add our colonies 25, five. These are not finished just yet, but that's still quite all right for me. So that's 30 CPs we are getting plus the four we still had. So we don't get this. And I think the maintenance is now only a two actually, as we have lost one of our scouts. So maybe it's still worth something, right? So it's going down to 32. So yeah, we can spend some stuff, but I think we really need more colony ships out. I guess we need to really increase our movement. And we also want to build our new shipyards. Oh, there is so much to do. And we have only 32. But I think the movement is set. We need movement. So we do this. That's 20. We have 12 left. We definitely want to build the second miner. So we cannot go for another technology right now. That much is clear. So we have spent um, 20 on technology. We can already note this one down. Question now, a uh, problem now really is with this move. Again, we don't get this for our um, existing scouts. If I start building new scouts though now, 
We could use it. So again, we have 12 left. We could now really start building shipyards here, for example. The problem is the shipyards are built at the same time as the ship. So we cannot use the new shipyards to immediately build something here. That's the problem. I still think it might be worth it to build maybe one. Here we could build maybe a new scout there. Somewhere I read that um, you shouldn't abandon on scouts too easily or too early in the game. Now also late game you should still consider building some scouts just to be cannon fodder or whatnot. And yeah, no, um, we cannot build shipyards at planets or colonies that are new. They had to produce income. Mm, makes sense. Thematically, it really does make sense. Question is, should we build something here right next door to us? I think it doesn't make sense, right? But on the other hand, let, let's say we build a miner here. It takes the miner one, two, basically the full next turn to make it there. Mm. No, I think it doesn't make sense in any way. The question now really still is, I mean, having the Prometheus, I think that's still okay. So doing the colony ship in here might still make sense, right? And we still have an awful lot of those. So I think let's let's definitely build a colony ship in here, right? So that's another eight, which means again, we are going out with four more, right? Yeah, we cannot build anything else, right? Could build decoys, but again, there is no point in decoys. Yeah, I think that's already it. Quite honestly, I was really hoping for another miner, but that's not going to happen. So let's note it down here again. We spent eight on this. I still think it's worth it, right? And a movement of two, by the way, maybe if again, if you don't know the game, it doesn't mean that all my let's say, let's say we really had only new ships, new, new fighter ships, that is, um, they wouldn't move now immediately to no, there is a interesting looking table at the back of the rules. So with a tech level of two, we could move one in the first turn, one in the second turn and two in the third turn. That's basically what this means. And with the next level, it's one, two, two, three, three and so on. Still, we would be able to move basically twice during the last turn, but again, only for ships that benefit from this. And that's, these are not colony ships or miners, unfortunately. So yeah, um, we basically have four left over again, right? That's the thing, indeed. So um, these are just helpers, by the way. So if I would have buy, bought something new, um, I could now mark it down so that I don't need to recount things for a future round to go. But so we are simply carrying this one over to the next round. And that's basically it. And again, last thing to do is to increase our colonies, which means we are flipping those over. So with the next economic phase, we definitely get some serious dollars. So that's not bad. So it's 40 in total. We will get some minerals, at least one. So hopefully we can make some investments. Yeah, I like that. And yeah, obviously really, really a very, very enjoyable game. So far. Even though there is really not a lot going on, but it really feels like control. You know, the old comp video game Masters of Orion, it has this kind of feeling to it, but only on a board game. Relatively slow pace so far, which is totally fine by me. Yeah, I, I really, I really do enjoy this. And obviously I start to regret that I will not get the expansions anytime soon, but that's life. <laughs> I will have to live with what I have here. Okay, as I mentioned, I will um, stop playing for today. Let me know if I already made some terrible um, rule scoops, if I completely missed a rule or did something terribly incorrectly, I think then it would be still okay for me to restart this playthrough again. I'm learning this game. Also, let me know what you think I should be doing next, um, what I should be focusing on in respect to those doomsday machines and maybe what I should add into the mix. Also, let me know if I should really uh, now start considering those barren planets here as let's call it hostile. Um, as soon as I find those, I will then place an alien token on it. And yeah, overall, let me know what you think about this game, about my playthrough so far. And yeah, um, with that being said, really hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And yeah, until then, bye bye.